Hello, everyone. Thank you very much for uh, joining today. So uh, my name is uh, Fritjof Boger Englarsen. I am the technical sales manager here at uh, Radiocrafts in uh, Oslo, Norway. And also we will be joined uh, shortly by uh, Remo Reichel. Uh, and he is the CTO in Solvimus, uh, one of our uh, long-time customers. For Hi, to everyone. <laughs> Good to see you. Hi. So um, I just uh, start by sharing some uh, house rules here. So after the webinar today, we will uh, have around uh, 30 minutes uh, scheduled. The total webinar is for 30 minutes and we have uh, 10 to 15 minutes of uh, Q&A afterwards to answer your questions. And uh, you can then just uh, post your questions in the chat window. And we will also record a, a version of this webinar and make it available online. And uh, please also visit our website for more detailed uh, white papers and application notes on all the things we will be dis discussing today. So just a short uh, introduction and history uh, of Radiocrafts and uh, wireless uh, Embus. So Radiocrafts was founded in uh, 2003, so we have been around for a long time. Our uh, main slogan is that we enable you to have very short time to market with your radio uh, connected uh, product. And we have a long track record of very high quality, you know, being used in devices that go into very harsh environments like uh, water meters that are supposed to operate in very tough conditions for up to 15 years. Uh, Radiocrafts is a leading uh, wireless uh, Embus expert. And part of that is, uh, you know, for, uh, knowledge that we have built up, uh, actively participating in standardization work. So we are active in uh, both the SEND, OMS group, uh, WISE standardization, and also the wire MyoT uh, standardization. Our main business is uh, smart uh, metering, but we also have other applications such as uh, solar, smart irrigation, street lighting, emergency lighting, and basically a range of industrial uh, wireless uh, communication applications. Uh, we also, uh, in addition to wireless Embus, we also offer uh, one of the most advanced mesh networking technologies on the market. And we will also uh, come back to that a bit, little bit later in the presentation, uh, because this is also something that uh, Solvemus do offer using our radio modules. And RIM is typically used when you need ultra high reliability on the communication. You have tight timing requirements, you need low power consumption, and you have many devices operating in one uh, confined area. So uh, what is wireless Embus used for? Well, basically it is mostly used for uh, utility meters and also for submetering. So submetering means that when you want to do utility metering on a more fine grained uh, level, you know, for instance, for every tenant in a large apartment building or for energy optimizations in, uh, in a factory floor where you want to do energy monitoring on, you know, individual machines, for instance. Uh, it can also be used for wireless sensor networks, uh, smart uh, city applications. You know, if you already have deployed uh, a wireless uh, Embus network for utility metering, it means that you can then piggyback other devices onto that same network, which is uh, already, you know, deployed and built out. So that is uh, something that has several nice use cases. And then we have also industrial use cases, you know, for instance, uh, temperature monitoring or flow metering in industrial uh, situations. Uh, you can read more about this in our application note 24 that you can find on our website. So now I want to introduce uh, Solvimus uh, and uh, Remo Reiche. Uh, so Remo has been a customer of us for a long time and uh, you know, um, not only for wireless Embus, but also now for the new RIM uh, mesh networking technology. Uh, so uh, we want to bring you uh, here to, you know, present your offering and tell us a little bit about Solvimus and uh, basically how you can help customers 
you know, with the end products uh, for radio connectivity in smart metering and many other industrial verticals. Yeah, and of course, what your modules are doing. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, maybe we can start and uh, I will first introduce myself. Um, so maybe go to the next slide. Um, yeah, that's me. Um, I'm founder or one co-founder and uh, chief technical officer here at uh, Solvimos. Uh, so my responsibility is the whole development of our products and projects and I'm working in the OMS group as well, focusing on the wired MBUS, but uh, obviously the protocol is more or less the same and just a different physics. So I all, always try to yeah, express the similarity between the wired and the wireless uh, MBUS and it's good that OMS is working on both. Um, so the, the company Solvimus itself is uh, just the name means we solve. Uh, we started uh, in 2007 after directly after our studies and um, yeah offered embedded design and development for our clients and uh, moved from the pure embedded design, custom specific designs to industrial automation and communication devices. And then we started the metering business in 2009, starting with MBUS, so wired MBUS. And, <laughs> but we found out that uh, there's a RF network uh, also used for, for the meters and this is wireless MBUS. And uh, uh, I think we are working with wireless MBUS modules uh, since 2010. And the Radiocrafts modules we are using and a lot of experience with them. Um, yeah, that's Solvimos and those who don't know our company. Um, yeah, the slide was correct. So we can both go to the products. So the, this, these are the standard products we are offering for the metering business, um, our OEM solutions, which means that we are still uh, doing some developments like PCBs or special uh, products. We have, of course, some standard products, level converters, gateways, and data concentrators with different software levels and uh, functionalities. We are selling software stacks for the MBUS. And uh, this is one important role uh, we have because um, we are doing the development in-house that we do a lot of adaption and development for our clients. And this is where Solvimus often comes into play if the standard products fit like 95% and the last 5% are the, the thing we need, or yeah, which need to be discussed. And uh, one important uh, trend is that uh, there is a huge demand for consulting and training regarding MBAS, regarding metering overall or certain infrastructure and so on. So this is what our business is. And yeah, just to align with Radiocrafts, here are some snapshots of products we are selling, standard products and custom specific products. And there you see the, the Radiocrafts modules. Um, do you see the mouse or? Mm, the no, I don't, I don't think we see it, but I see a lot of okay. nice Radiocrafts modules there. You know how they look like, so. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so we are using different modules and we have also some products using two different modules at the same time. Um, but uh, yeah, this is uh, where Radiocrafts is offering, yeah, good products. And uh, the, the reason why we are using uh, the Radiocrafts products is shown here. Um, we started using the wireless MBUS uh, modules, of course, uh, to receive the telegrams from the meters because our standard pro or our, yeah, the most common devices are just reading data, aggregating the data and sending them to third party systems like database or SCADA systems. So we are in the role to receive data from the meters. And obviously there is the wireless MBUS uh, useful for getting meters uh, wirelessly or the data from the meters wirelessly. Um, but this is the, the common task for the modules. Uh, we have chosen Radiocrafts 
because it is standard compliant. This is one important uh, feature that there are a lot of wireless MBUS solutions um, in the market, um, but not all of them are following the OMS certification. And uh, But uh, if you have a lot of different customers and uh, you see yeah, many countries and so on, then it's a good thing to be as compliant as possible. And uh, Radiocrafts is working in the OMS group as well. So uh, I I am happy that they are following the newest OMS regulations. Um, second thing is that uh, there's a pre-certification on the modules. So um, as a company who is developing the electronics, it's important to at the end certify the product. But if the radio module, for example, is pre-certified, it's quite easier and faster to uh, to certify the whole product, and you can you you can rely on uh, the module that it is behaving fine. Um, that is also the time to market, of course. You can use just a simple module, and you are know uh, you know that it's working. So you don't take care about this part of the hardware, for example. Yeah, <clears throat> what uh, important role is is that the form factor of the radiograph modules is always the same, oh, almost the same, I would say. Maybe there are some minor uh, differences, but uh, the form factor is the same. And uh, this is important. I'll come to that back later. But for us, it, play, uh, it plays a huge role. And uh, what we figured out as a company who is selling worldwide, uh, that of course, in Europe, you are talking about 868 megahertz, but if you go to different countries, then you see like 433 megahertz, you see the 915 or even 923 megahertz. And um, the, the advantage here is that we have all the frequencies in the radiograph modules with the same footprint. Hmm. And you can just easily change it. Easily means you need a new production lot, but you can just change the module and then you know, okay, I'm now having a product with a different frequency for a different country, for example. Mm. So, so for instance, this means that you can take the existing design you have made for Europe and then also by using a different radio module with a different frequency, you can also offer it on the Middle Eastern market, which is a growing market. Correct. Or... So we have uh, already some customers in, in the Middle East using the 433 megahertz. Yeah, mm. exactly. And it's the same design because uh, we are just connecting a different antenna then. So the antenna is external, so it's easy to change at the end. And uh, what is else the important thing that we can easily adapt and customize the product? Um, this is then used if you have like um, different scenarios to be yeah solved um so that's easy if you have the same footprint but it's still uh, not only a question of the footprint but also of the software you need to provide and you need to use um but uh, i will pay, uh, come back later or on the next slide maybe uh, regarding the the rim protocol in, in special so um yeah this is one product uh we are in relative new product um so this is the mooc one w w stands for wireless mbus normally because uh we are selling mbus products so w means wireless mbus and this is our main application uh, there's a wireless mbus module from radiocraft inside and we are calling it like iot gateway so the intention of the mooc one is simply the standard intention is receiving meters wired or wirelessly here it is a wireless receiver um, aggregating the data and sending it to the cloud via a narrowband iot modem uh, that's it more or less so nothing more to talk about um, but here we see um, huge demand in in overall the world and this is where the different frequencies are interesting for us so we have a module or we have the standard module for the 868 megahertz which is working well here in europe 
But as Feature of All also mentioned, uh, if we are selling or if you want to sell in the Middle East, then maybe the 433 is also, uh, yeah, as interesting as here the 868 in, mega, uh, in Europe. So this is one important uh, uh, reason why we are choosing the Radio Crafts module for the product. Um, in the past, we also worked with different other products, but uh, the, the scalability was not available. So that's this one important role. Um, but this, as this is the standard product, um, yeah, the, the, could also be some solution for other other markets. Um, Feature of uh, was talking to me one year ago, roughly, I would say, um, uh, how about to use a RIM uh, protocol and maybe uh, to use R Suite Five as a um, field bus. Mm -hmm. So we we moved um, the hardware in a way that, or we changed the hardware in a way that there will be uh, uh, RS485 uh, interface available. And we are using the same footprint uh, with the same, uh, or with a different module um, to, to bridge RS485 to the RIM protocol. Uh, so the intention is just, uh, if you have an RS485 in a distributed area and you want to aggregate data from different stations, like inverter stations or like charging stations somehow you need to transfer it wirelessly because there is not always a wire and modbus interface has some time restrictions and that's why the rim mod, uh, rim uh, infrastructure uh, is very useful for it because you have a good availability and uh, yeah, also the distances are not that small, so you can have like 400 meters link, so you can, yeah, use the RIM protocol there. Uh, maybe Fitchoff can tell something about the RIM, but uh, I think we are not here, we are talking about wireless bus. But this is obviously a, um, a good thing if you are an advantage if you are using uh, the Radiocraft solutions. And the same for the MyoT, which is also somehow um, used in, in the metering uh, business. Uh, we can also use the MyoT modules uh, to put yeah, Modbus meters maybe, or to put the data from Modbus meters to the cloud using MyoT. And uh, yeah, this is uh, where we can, yeah, yeah, use the advantages of the mod of the modules that they are footprint compatible and there's only a small change in software so of course the coming back to the wireless embass modules the the wireless embass modules are coming with a uh, yeah firmware which allows simply to listen to the the rf channel and you get the telegrams um which you receive uh, for the rim modules uh, you need some special software, but uh, it's only a small task to adopt the software. And uh, there's a good SDK from Radio mm. Cards to provide uh, the easy way to, yeah, to create your own software, which is running on the module. But this is maybe just a, a software thing. You don't need to change the hardware. And this is important for us as a, a company who is selling physical hardware uh, that you don't need to change the hardware every time and uh, you can just take a different module and you have you can provide a solution for a different uh, different scenario different application or use case mm. no I, I think the MOOC, the MOOC one is is really a very good example of uh, of how you with uh, with a common module uh, footprint uh, and form factor, mm -hmm. uh, you can really then support many different uh, frequencies. Uh, you know, we have also we have talked about 868 megahertz, 433 megahertz, but I would also like to say that we do have also uh, 915 megahertz for the U.S. market and also 169 megahertz that can be used uh, license-free all across Europe. 
Mm -hmm. And it really shows that we can not only have different frequencies in um, using a product with the, uh, one common hardware, but, but it also shows that we can support many different radio protocols. And, and all of these protocols have their special uses and, uh, and strength in certain applications, you know. Uh, so it really shows the flexibility, I think. Yeah, that is all from my side so far. Um, so, but yeah, now it's maybe up to you to, yeah, if you want to ask some questions or I don't know if each of if you, ah, yeah, there's a wrap up, okay. <laughs> yeah, so 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 just before we, we go on to, to have a quick look at the wireless MB suffering from radio crafts, you know, one good thing about, you know, with the MOOC 1, for instance, is that uh, we have been working so closely with Solimus for a long time. So we can, you know, when there are some custom requirements, you know, for instance, timing requirements, and this is something we see, for instance, in the solar segments and other segments that sometimes we need to go and make adjustments to the protocol to really suit the needs of the customers. And that is also something we can support together on, uh, on such a platform. Um, yeah, so this is just an overview of the various uh, Embus uh, solutions uh, and modules we, we have. Um, we have uh, the wireless Embus uh, 3 platform, which basically supports many different frequencies. It's the 433 megahertz, which is uh, quite uh, popular in, uh, in the Middle East. Then we have also the 865 megahertz frequency, which is used in uh, India. And we have the 868 megahertz frequency used uh, across uh, Europe. And also support uh, the various uh, modes used. And we have a design optimized for low battery consumption. We also have a platform called uh, MBUS4. And this is um, a very unique product. It uses the 169 megahertz frequency. And this is basically highly suited for you know, reaching devices that are in difficult locations, like down in the ground. It's very popular for applications such as uh, water metering. And in fact, uh, half of the water meters in Paris use a radio module from us with 169 megahertz uh, frequency. And the nice thing about this frequency is also that it is uh, license free all across Europe. And it is, uh, I would say, fairly low noise floor in this channel because it is not so so utilized many places. So I think it is a very good option for getting significantly longer range than, uh, for instance, you can get with LoRa uh, in some cases. Uh, we do have radio modules, uh, for instance, the, the MPC-1, which is basically a, um, uh, almost a water meter, finished water meter design. Uh, it can accept uh, pulse input from uh, from the water meter, and if you build your water meter uh, design on this, it is enable you to get very short time to market. And we also have a variant called MSM with various uh, sensor interfaces as well. And then we have a special variant called Vice, and Vice is uh, very popular in uh, in France for water metering. And it's uh, basically 169 megahertz uh, wireless MBUS variant based on what we call wireless MBUS mode uh, N. And also in the, on the WISE platform, we have also support for over the air firmware updates and also optimized it for very low power consumption. So yeah, we uh, we support uh, we supply many different uh, wireless uh, Embus solutions, and also for us, uh, it's um, uh, we we also are quite often involved, you know, by making customization to the to the wireless Embus module. So to fit the special needs, you know, to for instance put part of the 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 water metering application inside the module itself make a very cost efficient uh, design so typically we uh, we work with the customers and their requirements and then we make adaptations uh, to uh, typically one of the existing products we have to make it suit the exact for instance uh, interface to the metrology of the of the meter 
And we have uh, implemented many such smart metering uh, products uh, in several different segments. Uh, one thing that we are very proud about uh, is, uh, you know, our work with device protocol. And uh, we have been working closely with uh, a large supplier uh, called uh, Suez uh, for smart metering in, uh, in France. So how to get started? Well, you know, you should go to our website and have a look at our document library. And for all of our products, it is very uh, easy to get development kits. Uh, so you should uh, have a look at uh, the links here for uh, DigiKey, and you will have a development kit in, uh, in two days. Uh, and also on our website, you can uh, download uh, various uh, tools uh, for uh, very um, quickly get up and running with the development kits and start uh, to send and receive uh, data. Also here are the email addresses you can use for contacting us. So uh, thank you very much uh, for, uh, for listening. And um, uh, first, uh, Remo, do you, do you have something you want to, to add that we have uh, not covered so far? Mm, no, not from my side. So mm -hmm. I think you you give a good wrap up about your models on the uh, on the wireless embers. Um, especially the 169 is maybe also an interesting product for us. We not used it so far, but uh, maybe it's interesting thing, especially in future if you have like you said deep indoor uh, devices and then you need to send the data somehow out of the mm. building or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so really, you know, when you want to, for instance, uh, penetrate uh, reinforced concrete in, in large buildings, then you really see the benefit of, uh, of using that uh, lower frequency. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think, uh, you know, uh, there is still, a, you know, many people haven't, uh, you know, realized the, really the potential of this, uh, this, uh, this radio band uh, for use uh, across Europe. We, we see also use for it outside Europe, you know, in, in Australia, it is starting to be used for smart metering and also places uh, in uh, South America uh, and stuff like that. So we are always happy to uh, to discuss such uh, use cases uh, with, uh, yeah. with you. Okay. But here again, it's good. So we can easily change the module and then test it. If the customer has a meter running on this uh, frequency, then we can easily uh, have a proof concept or whatever. So, yeah. Mm. So let's see in the chat here if there is uh, any questions. I see a message here from uh, Magne uh, from Trollcard. So Magne, thank you very much for uh, joining. It's uh, good to see your name here again. Uh, anyone else that uh, would like to discuss something or, or have some questions? Uh, uh, yeah, there is a question from Magnus here. Uh, wireless Embus is still a start topology with its range limitations, which can be problematic in buildings. Do you foresee that Wireless Embus will migrate to a mesh topology in the future, uh, which I view as the only way to go for metering? So I think this is a very interesting uh, question. And, you know, to, to answer that question, you know, when you want to get a longer range in a building, you know, there are many ways to do this, you know, and, uh, and, um, and Remo has already told you about a few here. So, so one way to get even better range in a building is, for instance, to use a MyOT protocol. The MyOT will give you uh, you know, uh, better range. And there is also some uh, work about uh, possibly adopting the MyOT uh, protocol into OMS. Uh, so that will definitely give you um, a benefit. Uh, but then it's still a star protocol. But uh, in terms of range, uh, you know, what we see is that uh, MyOT is, uh, is uh, really in... Um, able to, to provide better scalability and range, for instance, than, uh, than LoRa. So it is a very good, uh, good option. 
Uh, then, you know, when you talk about getting better range, then we also have the 169 megahertz uh, technology. And that is also still a star network technology. But because you go down in frequency, you, uh, you get that better in-building range. So, uh, mm -hmm. so it's not that you necessarily have to move to a mesh technology to get better range in the building. Uh, but then also, as, uh, as Remo has presented here, you know, with uh, the MOOC 1 uh, being capable of also mesh networking using our RIM protocol, that is then also something that enables you to, um, to, support, um, uh, to support mesh networking in this kind of uh, application. So, so definitely, uh, there's many possibilities here. Mm -hmm. uh, star networking doesn't have to be short range. And also, as we said here, by using the Radiocrafts module, you can also get mesh networking, um, which again, you know, as you say, is have many, many benefits in uh, for in-building communication. Uh, uh, maybe one, yeah. one aspect from my side or two even. Um, so we are also rolling out uh, huge infrastructures with the wireless MBUS. But uh, we often need to decide between uh, how many meters are kept or received by one uh, data concentrator or gateway. Um, is it better to use one central gateway or is it better to even deploy also gateways in the field? Mm. So it's always somehow a discussion, um, but we figured out that uh, we can also have an easy uh, or we we can have an easy infrastructure or a simple infrastructure with a few gateways or even more gateways than one central uh, because um, it's easier to handle at the end. Um, mm. We also have some experience with uh, uh, how it's called repeaters, <laughs> wireless MBUS repeaters. Uh, they are also working somehow. Not all products are good. We know some with a good performance. Um, so you can use repeaters to uh, yeah, just ha increase the, the distances. Um, but yeah, maybe the MOOC one I presented before is a way because the intention is that you receive only a few meters uh, and the, the price of the data concentrator is then a little bit lower than standard uh, pro uh, yeah, receivers. So the, maybe it's good to have a smaller IoT gateway or multiple IoT gateways instead of uh, one central receiver. Mm. So, I, Magnus, I hope that uh, answered your question. And, uh, of course, uh, you're always free to book a meeting with us uh, to discuss uh, in more detail uh, for us to see how we can, uh, uh, can help you out. Anyone else uh, want to ask us some questions? Don't see any questions here yet, so. I think that means that we are, uh, yeah, yeah. Magnus say that we use RIM and it works beautifully. Wow, that's very good to hear, Magnus. <laughs> it's something we are very proud about. Um, okay, then I think we will uh, conclude and, uh, you know, um, I wish everyone uh, a nice Friday and also to have a good weekend uh, when uh, we start that uh, later today. So thank you all very much uh, mm -hmm. for joining and uh, always know that, uh, you know, just send us an email uh, and we will uh, do a Teams meeting with you uh, to discuss your, uh, your project. Thank you very much. And uh, Remo, thank you very much for, thank you. Uh, you also know, for my side. joining. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thanks, you. Bye.